In this fifth videotape, I will show you how to make lidded jars. This is an overhanging lid on this jar. I will also show you how to make inset lids. This lid, of course, is thrown upside down. I will also show you how you can distort the pot somewhat, square it off, put feet on it, uh, add some texture to it. So we can do lots of different things with these lidded jars. To start with, you have your wedged clay, but you should take a little bit of clay, or the same clay you're making the pot with, to use for the lid, so that the lid and the pot will shrink basically the same. With the overhanging lid, you don't have to do anything special to the top of the pot. That is, we don't have to have a lip on the pot like the other pots we've been talking about because the lid on the pots take the place of the lip. In other words, the lid on the pot finishes it off. You have to make a decision here if you want a wide base or a narrow base. I think we'll go wide on this one. Just squeeze the clay, sort of design the pot as you go up leave accent marks, and like I say, at the top you don't have to really give it a thicker lip like we do on the other pots. There's always some clay hiding down at the base, and when I look at this I, I decide where I want my accents and leave them in. The shape of the pot sort of talks to me and tells me what it wants. I take a little bit of this clay off so I can see the whole pot. I can throw with a, a rib. Give bigger throwing marks. Use those as decoration. Clean up this accent here. Then you measure the inside of the top of the pot. So this is three and seven eighths across the top on the inside. One of the most common errors I see in overhanging lids is that they're too flat across the top. So here's where you take care of that. You open this up almost all the way down to the wheel head, pull it out, and leave a nice thick rim here. And we want this rim to be sort of close to where you, close to three and seven eighths inches, like that. Now, there, now we have to divide this thick rim in half. You can do this several ways. You can do it with your thumb, brace the inside, brace the outside, and push down with your thumb. You can brace the inside, brace the outside, and push down with your, this finger. Or you can use a tool if you want to. But I, I use one of these, this one or this one. And then throw this ledge out a little bit and keep it thick on the rim because it'll break too easily if you don't. 
lids can be quite substantial. And remember that this wall has to be slanted towards the center. Shallow bowl with a thick rim, divide that rim in half. And we want it to be 3 and 7 eighths. This was lucky, 3 and 7 eighths. On this side, we measure straight down to here. And on this side, we measure straight down to there. Remember that we have to take the measurement right here. The outside of this fits the inside of the pot. And use the throwing stick to take off some extra clay on the bottom. And before you take it off, take one more measurement because sometimes you push that in. This is all right, I think. And we will let this dry for a couple of hours. And then we'll turn it over and put it back on the wheel and with a footing tool, we'll just round the top of this pot off. I've decided to add some feet to this uh, pot just to uh, maybe make up for the proportions here or give it a try. You know, sometimes you find that the, when you look at the pot, it's not quite complete or it's not complete for you. So I'm going to add feet to this and see if that will help it. So I'll just turn it over on the side there and where my finger marks are when I picked it up I'll just make those the uh, the spots that I'm going to add these feet it's not really symmetrical but I don't really care about that then I'll take uh, little pieces of clay like this roll them up, and then just squeeze it out like that. With a little water on the pot. Push it in for now. We can make sure they'll stick later. This is just to make sure that the clay is going to stay there. Then set it down on the flat surface and make sure that it's going to be sort of straight up and down. I think that that'll help this bottom part be a little stronger and I have I hope to have a nice strong lid on here to carry the rest of the pot but these are things that you can try to add to the shapes you make trying to make them into interesting pieces of handmade pottery after you throw your lids then you have to tool these and these tools are the same ones that we use when making a foot. Uh, this one you remember from before we made, as well as this long, long blade. And you can also use a cheese cutter uh, with the roller removed. Depends on what kind of cut you want on there. Uh, I like the cheese cutter when the clay is soft and it just gives a nice, um, a nice small twisty when you, when you take the lid off. I think you want, you want the lid to have the same feeling that you had when you made the pot. If the pot is thrown loosely, then you should tool the lid loosely. Uh, it would be too much of a contrast to throw the lid 
uh, loose and then to tool it tight. It just wouldn't fit. I know these are very um, small details, but as you get to making more and more pots, those details are what make your pots different than everyone else's. And that's what you should try to do, is put yourself in your pots and to uh, make them as unique as possible, while still being functional. We are talking about functional pots, but you don't have to make functional pots on the wheel all the time. This is the lid that I made for this pot, and we have to tool it. You can see now that it's not related at all to this pot, but we want to take this off, take the rest of this clay off, much like we did when we were footing the bowl. So we have to wet this rim and stick it down to the wheel head until it grabs. And there's not a lot of clay there to grab onto. Get it close to being centered. And I can take this tool, just taking a little bit off at a time, slowly moving back and forth. Remember, I want to make this pretty much the same thickness through there so that it will dry evenly. And I also want to keep this part the highest as I can. We want to keep as much curve to this pot, as much curve to this lid as I can. If I want to put a little accent down here like that, I can do that as well. Let the, teal, let the wheel go slowly and move the tool quickly and it will be, it will have the same feeling as uh, the pot. And just give it a little twist and this ridge here sometimes has a sharp edge that you should round off and then put it on the pot. This pot does not need a handle on the top. It's an overhanging lid. It should come off just like that. So now I think uh, the pot is a little, little better composed. And see how uh, naked it is, or see how much that this needs some strength here at the top. And the lid, this lid provides that visual strength, giving a shadow under here. And, and we'll see what the glazing does to it. With this clay, I will make a larger cover jar. We'll make a cookie jar. It takes a little more clay and also a little more clay for the lid. It's a nice sweeping curve all the way up to the neck. And then take the measurement across the inside of the lip. This one is maybe four and one eighth. And um, sometimes, just for variation, you can put white slip on the pot. Now this white slip will just give a slight contrast to whatever glaze you put on top of it. It's just 
add a little interest to the side of the pot. And you can also, after it's bisque fired, you can do some more if you want to. Then cut it off. Dry a couple of fingertips and pick it up. Set it aside and then throw the lid. We said the lid had to be four and one eighth inches. I think I have a lot of clay here for that, but we'll see. Remember to make this into a bowl, shallow bowl with a thick rim. And we should be in the ballpark already before we divide the rim. This time I'll divide it with my thumb. And remember this has to be tapered toward the center and measure it. Right now it's right on four. I think I'll clean it off first. I had a little extra clay on this one. It's better to have too much clay than not enough. If you don't quite have enough clay, then you have a tendency to make flat lids and thin lids. I think I pushed that out enough to uh, make it four and one eighth. Yes. We cut that off and we'll let it dry for a couple of hours. Then we'll set it back on the wheel and tool the top. This lid has dried a little bit, just about right for tooling. I'll take it and put a little bit of water underneath, help it stick to the wheel. <clears throat> There's not a lot of surface here to stick this to the wheel, so you have to be careful. Feel it grab. Depends on how dry the lid is as to what tool you might want to use. You want to try to get the clay to be evenly thick through there so it's not going to dry unevenly. And when I get close to where I think the finish will be, then I'll take it across the center quick like. With the wheel moving slowly, if I like this edge, then I'll mark that up. Clean off the bottom of this rim and set it on the pot and hope that it fits right. Notice this curve going across the top is picked up. And notice that this has a roundness to it that keeps in the keeping with the form of the pot. And then sometimes I let the, the lid dry upside down so that it'll dry evenly. Uh, you should check right in here, make sure that there's not a great deal of thickness uh, relative to the rim. And then let it dry upside down so that it'll dry evenly. If you let it dry on the pot, this rim will dry first and the inside will not dry. And that might give you problems too. It could end up cracking this little ridge right off. So I'll let this dry like this. Making small pots is not very impressive, but it is, it is very real. You have to make small cookie jars and small sugar and creamers and things like that. 
So it doesn't seem, especially for a video, <laughs> to be very spectacular to make small little pots, but that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make an inset lid, oh, sort of a sugar jar or something like that. And again, I took the piece of clay off of the ball of clay for the lid. This will be the lid. This will be an inset lid. It's sort of the opposite of the overhanging lid in that it's made the little division of the thick wall is made at the top of this pot rather than on the lid like we did in the overhanging lid. So we make a little cylinder and throw it, but leave, leave a very strong lip on this one. And before you start to give it any shape, you have to do this to it. You have to brace it on the outside, brace it on the inside, brace your thumb against your index finger and divide this wall in half, pushing the inside half down about a quarter of an inch. Now that's where the ledge, that little ledge will hold the, the inset lid. Now you have to reach around that and give shape to your pot. without disrupting your ledge, although it'll, it'll distort a little bit, but you can always refine it at this point, but you can't initiate it at this point. So these little pots should only take you a few minutes to make after you learn how to do it. Now this we measure the inside of that ledge and this this wall should not be vertical. It should be slightly tilted out so the lid will fit nice and snug in there and you measure take the measurement just on the inside. Three and a half inches for this one. And you set that down, and then the uh, clay required for this inset lid is pretty small. This, for a three and a half inch lid, is only like the size of a golf ball. But one of the mistakes that everyone has a tendency to make in making these inset lids is to hit too much clay. So, this is what I meant in the beginning by not having the flexibility to center a small piece of clay. I use the touch my thumb to my little finger to center this piece of clay and I use my little finger on my right hand and you'll just have to trust me that it's going up and down in there. This is one of the few pots I know where you do not open it up down the middle. For this inset lid, take, move off to the side and throw the knob first. Push this down almost, almost to the wheel head and make sure this is an undercut so that the knob is easy to grab onto. Then pick this wall of clay up at about a 45 degree angle, just a couple of times. Now you have to clean it off under there. So far we haven't taken any measurements yet. The outside of this lid is the only part that, we're have to, that we have to measure. So put your pinky under there and lay this lid down and make sure that the lid from here, from this point to the end, is headed down. We want to keep that over the top feeling. We want to keep that round feeling in this lid. We don't want to flat, flatten out top of the pot there. 
Now you measure the outside of this, and it's supposed to be three and a half inches. This is a little too big. So I can take this needle and take a little bit off. And drop this down. If you make the lids too thin, they're easily broken. People often drop lids anyway. And now I think it's just right. We'll cut that off. And if you're careful, you can pick it up now. And it should set right down in there on that, on that ledge you made. But don't let it don't put it in there now at this point. It'll stick and uh, you won't get it out without distorting it. So just put it next to the pot and let it dry a little bit before you set it in there. But that's the inset lid. One way to attach a bat to the wheel head is to throw a thin sheet of clay over the wheel head so that the bat or the round piece of wood, masonite or plastic will stick down to the wheel. Take it way out to the edge and flatten it out. Little grooves in there will help uh, put the bat, have a little suction when you put the bat on. So we wet the bat a little bit and put it on top of that clay and fasten it down. On this piece of clay, after I get it centered, I'm going to open it up all the way down to the wheel head, or in this case, to the bat. So I'm just throwing the walls of a pot without the base, and that will allow me to play with it quite a bit. And it's a nice method of making interesting shaped pots. So here I'm going to go all the way down to the base, through the bottom. That means with this piece of clay I can make quite a large size pot because I don't have to have any clay used for the base or for the bottom of the pot. I will throw that later. I want to make this into an oval pot. I could make it into an absolutely square pot. That is, with sharper edges than I could get by just paddling it square. And I have to leave some clay at the top here to help hold it in center. This is going to be a covered pot again. So I want the opening to be big enough to get your hand in. Fill this up.
I'm just centering this clay. This is going to be the bottom of that pot that I just threw. So I'm just going to flatten this out. And later on I will make it into an oval shape to fit the bottom of that pot. So at this point I'm just pushing it down. Just take it till it's about three quarters of an inch thick. There are lots of ways to make the base for this pot. You can throw it like I did on the wheel, or you can run it through a slab roller, or you can just take the clay and throw it like this. The throwing, throwing of the slab compresses the particles a little better, but this will work as well in case you don't have a slab roller or you'll want to throw it. Make this about as thin as your pot is, and I think that's all there is to it, just like that. I want this top this top part to be dry enough, see how soft it is still. I want this top part to be dry enough to hold itself up. So you can, you can hold a torch on it, keep it turning, and when you, when you see some steam coming off the pot, then you'll know it's getting dry. Next, I'm going to take this pot off the bat, turn it upside down, get it close to being centered on the wheel, and fasten it down with some clay. Oh, after that's fastened down, then I want to make this into that oval shape that we were talking about. So it's wide this way. And I use this coping saw with just a wire in there so I can start and hold it still and get that to be level. this and maybe even uh, score it and tilt the wall towards the inside and I'll pick this up and lay it in there like that. Paddle this to make sure that there's a good contact between all of those edges. And then cut it off generally, just not real close, but set this on the pot. Just throwing the walls without a bottom allows you to square off the pot, make it a triangle. You could throw the base, the walls of the pot, and the top, and the bottom on separate, at separate times, and adjust them all to fit together into a nice, unique kind of pot. It just should open up a lot of uh, ways for you to investigate and make different pots. This is a good strong 
shape and it holds a lot of cookies. <laughs>